How's it going? So this is going to be my review of Ant-Man uh, 3. I watched it last night, uh, pretty late last night, so I didn't want to do it when I got back. Um, it will be me and my dog today. Here I see, there he is. Say hello. So he, he's going to help me review it today. Uh, what'd you like about it, Frankie? Uh, he said it was boring. Anyways, uh, the movie, let's see. It's a movie. It exists. Uh, is it good? No. Is it bad? No. Uh, does it make me excited for Phase 5 of the MCU? No. Not at all. Um, there's just so many, like... Uh, it, the whole movie's kind of pointless and dumb and doesn't even need to exist. It starts off and ends the exact same way. And the whole reason the movie exists is for the stupidest reason in the world. Michelle Pfeiffer, who looks, by the way, amazing. I, cu I couldn't believe how old she was. I think she's like 64. But anyways, she looks amazing. Anyways, the whole reason the movie exists is because they're sitting around having pizza, family dinner or something like that. And they keep asking her. It's like, she's like, oh, I'm so happy that we finally get to do this because, you know, she's been gone for 30 years. And... <laughs> They're like, well, every single one, they're like, well, what happened? It, you know, when you're in the qu quantum room, can you tell us anything about it? She's like, no, no, I refuse, I refuse, I want to forget about it. Even Hank Pym, you know, Michael Douglas is like, yep, she won't even tell me. So refuse to tell anyone, I, I can't, I'm protecting you or something. I don't know. And then all of a sudden, Cassie, who is also an Ant-Man in this as well, um, she's like, oh, come to the basement, I built this thing. Oh, what is this thing that you built? Oh, I just built like this quantum... Um, like basically like messaging system where we could like, you know, investigate down there without actually being down there. Basically, it's like a, a message system. You can message things down there. Oh, yeah, this high school student just built this quantum thing. Okay, whatever. It's so, so dumb. It's, it's just so dumb. It's just like she never shows anything about like, oh, she's really scientist, you know, into science or anything like that. She's just like, Rain, yeah, I just built it over the summer. So she builds this thing, and then, of course, Michelle Pfeiffer is like freaking out. It's like, no, no, you need to turn it off. It's terrible. And then they're like, well, why do we need to turn it off? Oh, you shouldn't contact her. Why? 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 I'm not going to say why. And she just pulls a plug on it. Oh, but what do you know? There's still some, it's pay, being powered from the other side. And then they get sucked down. And then they get down there, and they get separated. And the whole time they're down there, like, oh, what is, this is, place is so weird. You never told me it was anything like this. She's like, I can't tell you anything. And then all of a sudden a ship starts, like, navigating and, like, looking for people, like a scout ship. And then they're like, what is that up there? Uh, uh, old Ant-Man, Michael Douglas, and uh, the Wasp. They're with Michelle Pfeiffer. It's them three, and then Cassie and Ant-Man are separated. And then Michelle Pfeiffer, I can't tell you, I can't tell you. Just duck, hide behind here, do this, do this. And then they go to a bar with a bunch of aliens. And then they're like, what's going on? Can't you tell us? That? No, no, I got to protect you. I got to protect you. Then people start shooting them. Why don't you tell us this the whole time? And then like halfway through the movie, she finally was like, okay, I'm going to tell you. So there's this guy named Kang, and he's a bad guy. He wants to destroy the world. He was exiled there. So that's why... The movie exists. By the way, there's spoilers. <laughs> um, if she would have just said, oh, when they first sat to dinner and they're like, can you tell us about the quantum realm? She's like, well, there's this bad guy named Kang and he was exiled there. I helped him rebuild his ship, but then I destroyed his ship after I helped him rebuild it because I realized his master plan was to destroy basically everyone and everything. So I didn't want him to get out of the exiled you know, quantum realm. And if she would have just said that, and said, that's why we shouldn't go back there. There's a person, and if he gets free, we're all screwed. If she would have just said that, those words, the movie wouldn't have existed. Because then they wouldn't have turned on their little quantum text messaging machine. And yeah, so that's dumb. Um, there's just a bunch of dumb things that happen throughout the movie, and it's just, I don't know. Like, there's a couple cool action scenes, a couple funny scenes. It's not like the funniest MCU by any means. Not the best action by any means. It's just... It's just like a lot of stupid things. Like, throughout the... I'm like, oh, God. Like, there's this part where... Um, the Wasp and Ant-Man 
are looking for their daughter. And their daughter is on this radio thing that broadcasts and has a big projection, broadcasts to the entire city. How does this city exist? I don't know. Anyways, there's a bunch of aliens that exist in this city. Uh, Kang, like, built it, but it's like, where did all these aliens come from? Anyways, she broadcasts, so it, there's, a, like, you know, I don't know, probably like a, a mile-tall projection of her in the middle of the city, and she goes, she's trying to get the rebellions to, <laughs> to like, fight back, and then she's like, come to the tower. She's like, meet me at the tower. There's something along the lines of that, and Ant-Man and the Wasp are watching her, and then literally within the same scene, after she it cuts out, like, obviously Kang, like, cuts the broadcast down. The Wasp is, like, typing on something, and she has this thing in her hand. She's looking at it, and she goes, I've located her. She's over by the tower. And it's like, yeah, because she literally just said it two seconds ago that she's at the tower. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, this is so stupid. <laughs> there's a bunch of scenes like that. Um, I don't know. There's just... I don't know. It's a movie. It exists, and there's a couple cool things in it, but it, it, this kind of seems pointless. Um, I mean, if you went back to phase two through three, right? I, I, I don't remember all the phases and what exists, but like when you had, you know, Winter Soldier, Civil War, you know, all those, you know, Thor, Ragnarok, all those, like, great movies. And then even Ant-Man 1 was pretty good. Ant-Man 2 is forgettable. Like, anything after Endgame, honestly, is literally just forgettable. I don't know when Ant-Man 2 came out. It might have been before Endgame. But I don't remember anything about it. Nothing special stands out. Nothing. Not a single thing. Uh, There's nothing I really want to go back and rewatch. This falls right in place with all that stuff. There's this part where they have this woman rebellion leader, and she's supposed to be really tough. I mean, the actress that plays her does steroids. I mean, she's super muscular and gigantic, so it's probably some buff person. But to, it just seems so out of character. Like when someone says something that seems so out of character, it just you're saying that seems so forced, and I hate that. So there's this part where Cassie's trying to break her out. And here's this scientist that can build a quantum, basically, text messaging machine. But she can't seem to open a door. And she's acting really stupid. She's like, how do you open this door? Is it a numbers thing? Is it a, th- a thumbs scam? I don't know. And she starts hitting it. And then this little minion comes, and she slams the guy's face against it, like kicks him or something like that. And, you know, his face unlocks. So sometimes it's a number system. In the same jail cell. Sometimes it's a number system. Sometimes it's a face. Who knows? It it doesn't really make any sense. So this face, the guy's face hits it. It opens the thing. And so then the the rebellion leader chick comes out. And they're like talking about something. Well, we got to get the others, blah, blah. And then the guard, the minion, he's dazed. And he gets up and she just kicks him, front kicks him. And then Cassie goes, oh my gosh, you're so cool. Like, what? Like, it was so weird. I'm like, it's almost, I hate it when they basically, they, when characters have to tell the audience that you're supposed to like someone. Like, when the characters go, I remember this in Wonder Woman 2, when Cheetah, before she's Cheetah, and Gal Gadot are sitting and having lunch, and it pans into them, like it goes screen to black, pan, then it, you know, pans into them, and they're at some cafe having lunch, and then they're laughing, ah, ha, 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 and Wonder Woman goes, oh my gosh, you're so funny, like you're the funniest person ever. Like, doesn't tell you what the joke is, doesn't like let you make your own opinion of, hey, this character's funny because she made me laugh. It's more like, this person, I'm going to have another character tell you that this person is who I want you to think she is, right? This person is cool. And it it seems so dumb. Um, I mean, the rebellion leader girl was this whatever, forgettable. No one, yeah, I don't know. The the whole thing is just like a bunch of like that. At the end, you know who kills Kang is the ants. And this this, this part was so dumb. I like the ants. The ants are actually pretty cool. But this part was dumb. So when they get sucked into the quantum realm, it goes Michael Douglas, Michelle Pfeiffer, and then... 
I don't know the girl's name, but Wasp. They get sucked in first. It's like evil on something. Uh, they get sucked in first. Then the ants, because there's these super smart ants in like an ant tunnel, chamber, whatever. An ant home, farm, whatever it's called. That gets sucked in. And then it's Cassie and uh, Paul Rudd Ant-Man. They get sucked in. And as they get sucked in, they all kind of end up at different spots. But when the ants come to save them, Michael Douglas is like, oh, the ants, since time works different here, the ants actually showed up 10,000 years before us and actually evolved for the next 10,000 years. And it shows the ants like building cities and building lasers and all sorts of stuff. They became super smart and evolved. And I'm like, but how? They literally got sucked in right around the same time as them. And if you want to say, well, they got sucked in a different, uh, there were different times. It's like, well, Paul Rudd and Cassie were right next to the ants. Paul Rudd actually ran on the ant farm in, okay, you want it down? In the, when they're getting sucked in. And it's just like, I don't know. This is, but, and so I go, how did they get, they never explained. They just said, this is what happened. It's like some writer's like, I'm going to write that. And that sounds cool. Are you going to explain it? just is. Time works differently. That's all they said. <clears throat> so then the ants come and basically pick apart Kang, pick him apart, and he's left without no weapons. The, the best part was, at the very end, after this big battle with the ants, there's like Paul Rudd and Cassie, and they're standing like right here. And you see this wide shot behind them, and there's a couple straggler ants, like the last line, and they're like walking through. They've all already won, so they're, the ants aren't in a hurry to get there. They've already won. And there's like a big ant in the background, far background, and then there's like a medium-sized ant that run past like Paul Rudd, and there's another little ant that is running past Cassie, and you don't really notice it, but if you watch it, watch it. So the ants have, what, six legs or something like that? And if you watch, they've already run, or uh, one, so the ants are running, and he lifts up his, two of his arms, and he's like this. <laughs> he's like fist bumping in the air. I found that pretty cool. Anyways, but there's that. And then um, they end up, oh, this is the dumbest thing. And so Michelle Pfeiffer, she's in the tower. And, of course, every villain, every villain in here, not just, like, stereotypical, like, I have cornered you now, and I'm going to defeat you. Let me monologue every single time they corner him. Like, Modoc is in this, and he's cornering Cassie, and he's like, ha ha, your dad is not here to save you. And he starts monologuing how he's going to kill her. Then Cassie turns small, runs away, turns big, and then he finds her again. Ha ha, I've cornered you. I am going to destroy you. And she's like, oh no, turns small, runs away. And it's like, does that, like, over and over. It's like, they didn't know what to do with her, so they're like, here, let's just throw in Modoc, and then they can run... They basically is constantly running around at the final scene. It's pretty dumb. Anyways, and then finally at the very end, she goes, you know, you don't have to be mean. You can be Darren. You don't have to be Modoc. And he's like, I don't know how to be that. And he's like, just don't be a dick. And that was like, the, and then he decides, okay, I'm going to be nice now. And then help save the day. And they did a bunch of jokes. It was kind of stupid. Um, there's a couple of funny scenes with Modoc, but overall, I think it was kind of a dumb character. So then Michelle Pfeiffer, after, you know, Kang first has a monologue, and he's like, finally, I fixed my engine. That's the whole reason Ant-Man had to go down there. They needed Ant-Man to use a pin particle so he could make his engine work and travel the multiverse and destroy it all. That's what Kang wanted. Finally, he gets it. He puts it in the thing, and uh, he's ready to travel and dominate and conquer everything. But that takes him like, I don't know, in their time, probably like 15, 20 minutes, screen time, probably like 10 minutes of him, don't know what he's doing. He puts it in the thing and he's like, all right, people, let's go. That's it. And then there's like this blue shield around his little base and they sit there. And I'm like, well, how long does this thing take to heat up? I don't know. Doesn't say, just takes forever. And enough time for Ant-Man to come and destroy everything and the ants. So, I don't know. It was pretty stupid. But anyways, Michelle Pfeiffer is like, there's one boost left of power in it, but we have to go now to send us back to our realm. And they're like, okay. So they all get up there. Everyone goes through but Ant-Man because Kang uh, is trying to go through because he barely survives the ants. And so then they start battling or whatever. And then the portal closes um, 
and then the little engine for some reason sucks in Kang and kills him. I don't know. And then all of a sudden on the other end, they use their little text messaging machine to open another portal conveniently. Doesn't ever explain that to begin with at all. Just, hey, I'll use my text messaging machine to basically, it's like a message machine, open another portal, and then they go through. So then Ant-Man is saved. He's not forever stuck in the quantum realm. Yeah, I, I, I'm just going off basically giving all these uh, the stupid instances of it. Um, in the end, the end credit scene is, it shows the, you know, the, all the Kangs, you know, whatever it's called, the Hall of Kangs, and, or the Crown, something of Kangs. I'm blanking on the word right now. Um, so it shows all the Kangs. And here's the thing. They, they say, like, they killed Kang, blah, 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 whatever his number was. And they're like, oh, we got to stop the Avengers now or something like that. All the Kangs, the Council of Kangs, the Council of Kangs sent this one Kang to the quantum realm. Because here's how it works. You have the multiverse. So there could be another universe with David in it where he has superpowers. Um, fighting crime, doing things. There could be another universe where David actually is a famous musician, just not in this universe. All right, in this universe, I am just a lonely YouTube person. <laughs> so, multiple universes, and each universe has a king, and each king can be good, bad. It could be anything, right? There's could be a universe where I'm, you know, a drug lord somewhere, killing people. I don't know. So, but this king was the worst of all the Kangs. And all the Kangs decided, like, he's so bad, we're going to send him to the quantum realm. Now, there's only one quantum realm, because time and space work differently down there. So it's not like each multiverse has their own quantum realm. So all the Kangs agreed that this Kang is terrible, broke his little machine thing he had where he could travel the multiverse, and then exiled him to the quantum, uh, the quantum realm. So he was stuck there. Michelle Pfeiffer didn't know and decided to help. And this is another stupid thing. She was there for 30 years, and she just stayed in this little dirt pit the whole time, and then finally this guy shows up, and then she was like, oh, it's so nice to actually have someone to talk to for a change. But the whole time there was an entire civilization down there that she never bothered to talk to and other human-looking things because Bill Murray was there. Yes, the actor. And he was called something. And they talk about how they had a love affair and they had sex. I'm not even joking. And so, but for half the time, she was like, there's nothing to do down here. And then all of a sudden, this guy shows up and she's like, you know, maybe if I just venture beyond this little dirt pit, I'll find the whole civilization with buildings and, and creatures and animals and things to do and people to talk to and Bill Murray to have sex with. Whatever. So he was exiled there. Michelle Pfeiffer actually helped him. But then right before he was going to leave, she destroyed the machine that they just took years and years building. And uh, yeah, so this is going to be a long review. Needless to say, the movie was just there. It just exists. Um, it's like Thor 2. It exists. I wouldn't say Thor 2 is a good movie. I would never go back and watch Thor 2. Um, it's, I don't even remember Ant-Man 2, so I can't even tell you if Ant-Man 2 is better. I remember Ant-Man 1. Ant-Man 1 I liked. This is just... I have a feeling that the MCU is done, <laughs> as we know. They will exist, and they'll continue to come out with movies, and they'll probably make a lot of money, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not excited for Kang at all. Like, watching this, people are like, oh, he did such a great job. I'm like, okay, the actor played the character, but, and the lines were delivered well and things like that. But the fact that the character that they wrote is not very good or compelling. First of all, they killed the worst one. Ant-Man killed the worst one. So even if they come with the second best Kang or the third best, even if they come with five Kangs, if Ant-Man pretty easily defeated this one, they could probably pretty, the Avengers as a whole could easily defeat all the other Kings. So, okay, there's no threat there. It doesn't seem very, unless they're doing something crazy with time or something like that, but I don't see him as a threat. And then on top of that, Thanos was a great villain because his motive was cool. 
Like, I understood his motive, and that's what made him a good villain. His motive is very weird. It's like, oh, I don't know what it is. He made a mistake or something like that he was talking about, and then he's trying to fix his mistake, but at the same time, he was just destroying multiverses, the ones that seemed to, like, threaten him. And I'm like, so your, your goal is to destroy different multiverses that you don't like, and then you rebuild them as a new... I mean, I don't know. It, the, the threat didn't seem that great. And his motives didn't really seem that great. Nor did they really, like, explain his motives. Like, Thanos was pretty easy. Like, they explained it. It's like, look, I travel around the galaxy. There's a lot of people that didn't have basic resources. And, um, and then I realized that there's just too many people for all the resources that we have out here. And so people are going to suffer, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to eliminate half the beings on, in the universe so there's enough to go around. Now, a lot of people will say, well, why don't you just double or triple the amount of resources? Well, if you did that, then maybe there's too many resources on a planet, as in it just takes up too much space. Or if you did that, they would just consume more and then you know, be exactly where they were. But then if you cut people in half, wouldn't they eventually just double in size? So there's a lot of holes in his theory. Um, but still, at least I understood what he wanted to do. And, yeah. And they had a nice little backstory about him on Titan. And he tried to warn everyone, no one listened, blah, blah, blah. blah. But the Kang is this, I don't know. He, he, to me, Kang is about as throwaway of his villain as Loki was in Avengers 1. What do you want? I just want to rule something. Okay. <laughs> Here, you can rule Earth. That was his whole motive, was I just want to rule something. That's basically Kang. Like, he doesn't seem that great of a villain at all. Um, so I'm not looking forward to Avengers 5 at all. Also, if we get all these... Well, then this is like... It's not an Ant-Man movie. It's like an Ant Family movie. And it's just so dumb. I don't know. It's just... I don't know. Whatever. Um, watch it. If you have, let me know what you think below. Um, all right, have a good day.